So first of all, what is open intelligence? Your power to know what is looking through your eyes now. Just take a brief moment to identify that about yourself that is looking that is looking at me, that is totally aware of everything that's going on. You can do that by just stop thinking. So that is a very powerful instruction. It's very powerful in the way that it immediately introduces yourself to who you are, your true nature. This power to know, clear, open, cognizance, the ability to always be totally stable and be totally unaffected of anything. And you he if you have the openness to wanting to know what this is, you are very, very fortunate. Because open intelligence delivers everything in your life. Everything that you were deeply longing for, you would find in open intelligence. So open intelligence is what we can introduce ourselves to with this simple, very simple practice by just stop our thinking. Because the practice is not about trying to prolong a state of emptiness or whatever you are looking for in life, maybe. As I was when I came to the training, I was looking for something that could produce well-being in my life. And I thought that that was some kind of relief from all the thoughts and emotions that I felt was really painful for me. But with the short moments, <coughs> you would see more and more that there really is no separation between thoughts and open intelligence. It's just the dynamic energy of open intelligence. So what we are doing in this training is that we are not trying to get rid of anything. We are simply letting things be as they are in short moments. And if you really look into your experience, you can see that we don't have that many options how to handle our experience. We basically have four options always. Now the first option is to indulge your experience, try to understand it, try to analyze it. That was one thing that I was very occupied when I came to this training. I was always trying to think, why am I sad? Is it because I was abandoned as a child? Why am I, why, why am I experiencing fear, for example? <laughs> Is it because I wasn't satisfied as a child? You mean all those stories. And when you're doing that, when you're using your mind in that way, it's like you're collapsing all your attention to the data, that aspect of your mind that is used to describing things, labeling things, putting definitions of things. So it's just you're like you're putting all your energy, all your attention to one aspect of what's going on there. So that would be indulgence. And another way of handling our experience is to just suppress it. So say for example you are feeling sadness again, you just push it down. As a way of handling that maybe painful state, you just push it, push it away. And if you are a little bit more skilled in how to use your mind, you try to replace it. And in one way, that is something that you, you can see is in one way could be powerful because you are changing something into something else. But it's still very limited. So say, for example, again, that you are feeling angry. And if you are a spiritual seeker or something like that, you maybe just say to yourself, I shouldn't be angry, I should be compassionate. So then instead of being angry to someone, you're handing them a flower, for example. And then we have the four options that is so powerful and that is mainly the, the practice of this teaching is to let everything be as it is. Just relaxing, taking the short moments and see what actually happens when you are sad, for example. So what you would see when you let things be as it is, you would see something else in the experience, but it takes openness. And that is basically what an, a short moment is, to bring openness into a situation and recognize something else appearing in this sadness that you haven't been aware of before. before. And why? Because you're describing. It's like when sadness is arising, it's like you're never giving yourself the opportunity to really experience how is sadness here and now. 
but instead you're, it's like you're reviewing the all experience of how it was to be said before. And I could deeply sense that when I felt anxiety, for example, which was a very big problem for me when I came to this training. So when I felt the sensations arising in my body, I immediately, these descriptions all, almost kicked in immediately. Descriptions like, oh, not this anxiety again, it's going to be horrible, I know exactly how it is. It's going to be a terrible day. So when that happens, when you take the short moments and have this kind of openness when the sensations are arising, you will see something else. For the first time maybe in your life, you will start to experience how is it to feel anxiety or sadness in this instant. So that is why openness is so important in this training. So what happens also is that you see, for example, in fear, as I did with anxiety, I started to see something in the fear that was totally stable, that was unrecognized for me before, because I was, all my attention was collapsing into the descriptions. So I started to see in fear, there is actually something about me that is totally stable. So in fear, there was no fear. So I didn't have to get rid of the fear. And it all came about by this openness, this openness to just take a new look and to see what's really going on. So also in, also in depression, for example, when I came to the training the first time I heard something like, there's no need to be depressed because you are depressed. I was really confused. I mean, how, c how can that be possible? That is why it's so important to find this open intelligence in your life. Because that is what is totally stable in depression or whatever data comes up. So I could really see how I shift my whole perspective changed from not trying to get rid of the depression or whatever I was experiencing, but instead to see the inseparability of the two. I could see that the dynamic energy that was always present in everything I was experiencing was always there, but it took the commitment to not buy into the descriptions or the, all the labelings I was putting on my experience. So you can see that depression is just a label. It's just that you have taught yourself to believe that this is actually what is going on when you feel depressed. So when I took the short moments in this and recognized that there is something that is stable in the situation, there was not so much fear present anymore. So I started to see over and over again when I used the four mainstays, which is the, the support system in this training, because sometimes it's not enough to just have the short moments. Maybe as I was in the beginning, you are very critical and you don't see the immediate impact of a short moment, then you need the assurance for people around you. It's like you're, when the first time when you're whipping cream, for example, it feels like a hopeless project, but you have someone standing there telling you, if you just continue, something will happen. So that's why it's so important to have the support system. And the support system in the balanced view are, of course, first of all, the short moments. And then it's very good to have a guide, to have a trainer that has maybe felt depression also and to, that can assure you if you continue to seek support, which is basically what the Four Mainstays is, it's a support system. It's about allowing yourself to be fully supported, to create that space inside of you, to allowing everything to be exactly as it is. But you need the trainer, you need a guide, someone that is always there to encourage you someone that, that is always there to remind you of your true essence as open intelligence. And then we have all the media on the website, all the trainings, the texts, the talks, and everything. You can just tap into this very powerful website whenever you feel that you need support. And everything you, you can want, you can find there. And then, the, then we have the wonderful community. People just like everyone sitting here, who can support each other, 
who can really help you to see that the way that we are interacting with each other in this community is the living proof of the effect, the, how effective this training is. So that's what I started to see. And if you think that you really, really can do this on yourself, then you really, really need a trainer. I was brought up in that sense that I should be independent, I can do everything on my own. So it took some time for me to really allow myself to really be supported in that way. But let's go back to the, the concept of feeling depressed again. So what I started to see in that is that I wasn't so scared of it anymore. And that only came about because the support system and the short moments. So what then very gradually happened for me was that I could extract the power from these painful states. And extract the power means instead of trying to get rid of depression as I was doing before, I could now see when I was letting it be as it was, there was some very powerful energy going on. And it took this act of not describing it anymore but just being very open and see what's really present when you don't buy into these old stories about what's going on.